Hello, welcome to the video for what is the material, the parameter. Now, the parameter itself is not an actual special node. Technically, if you go into your palette and you look into the parameter section, you will find parameters themselves. But the parameters is more of a switch on specific nodes to allow them to be used inside of material instances. There is a video covering this, but it's a way of taking a material, duplicating it, and then allowing the ability to have it be modified in real time or in design time without having to edit the shader itself and recompile. So let's say we take our existing material we have here. Let's say, let's go ahead, let's plug in our base color right here, and we'll plug in our roughness right here, and let's go ahead and plug. You know what? Let's go ahead. We don't need that. Let's duplicate this one. And we'll go ahead and plug this into our metallic. So now we have a basic texture here. We have a full value metallic, full value roughness. Let's move these out. That's, let's organize this, make it a little easier on us. There we go. So we have a pink color. We have a full value for metallic and we have a full value for roughness. Now let's say we wanted something very similar to this to use for the rest of our level, but we wanted a blue version, we wanted a green version, we wanted it to have non-metallic, and we wanted something that's not rough, and maybe some variation in between. Now we could go ahead and we could create 10 different materials, but that's gonna create 10 different materials. Well, we could turn some of these into parameters instead, create material instances, and then you end up with one shader with a few variations instead of a few shaders with one variation. And in terms of performance and memory usage, the instancing using parameters is easier to work from and it is better for performance. So let's go ahead and convert these over to parameters. Now we can either convert to parameters or use parameters. Let's say we start with this one here. This is going to be our single constant. In here, what we're looking for is going to be our scalar parameter. If we drag this in, you're going to find this. It's going to look nearly identical. The difference being it's going to have a slider min and max, and you're going to have a parameter name and parameter group. Functionally, it's going to be the same. It's going to have a value, which is a constant, a single value, and it's going to drive something else. Now, the way I prefer to work on it, so this way you could not have to worry about redoing your entire graph, is any node that can be turned into a parameter, you can right click and convert to parameter. It also gives you the ability to convert back to a constant in case you don't need it as a parameter. So it's great for prototyping and then once you decide you need something to be a material instance, you can just convert to parameter. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and convert these three to parameters and you're gonna notice they're gonna change over. We'll pull these down a little bit. And get these out of the way. So now that we have parameters, you're going to find basically you have your existing values and then you're going to find your parameter name and a group. So let's go ahead and name this one to color and we'll put it into group. Let's call this one setup. We'll go and change this one over here. We'll leave it at default value of one. We'll name its parameter value metallic because it's going to adjust metallic and we'll change this one back to setup. And well, our last one's going to be roughness. And we'll change its group to setup as well. Now for the roughness, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set up a slider min and max. So what this does is allow you in the actual parameter settings itself to set up a minimum and a maximum on a slider. So we'll go ahead and show you that. So we'll set this to zero and one and apply. And you'll notice nothing's really going to change inside of our material itself. And if we open up our material, again, nothing's changed. Well, we need a material instance, which we can do by right clicking, create material instance. And what this is going to do if we open up the material instance itself is it's going to give us a different look at our material and it's going to give us all of our parameterized options, which you can see here. So let's say, for example, this is our default, which we're happy with. It's a full metal, full rough, pink material. But let's say we wanted to make a green version. Well, let's go ahead and apply this one here. 
So that's our one. Let's duplicate our cube. And now let's say we wanted a pink version. Well, let's go ahead and we'll make another instance. We open it up. We can check the color, change this to our desired value. Hit save and that's it. That's all we're done. If you notice, there was nothing for compiling. Using material instances does not need recompiling because all we're doing is adjusting parameters and that can be done in real time. Again, I have another video covering material instances. This is covering how the parameters work and how they're exposed. So as you saw, that was really simple. If I wanted another version, well, create another material instance. Let's make this one non-metallic this time, pink. And we're done. Now we have a non-metallic pink. You can even make instances of instances, which basically will inherit the previous settings. So this one is going to be pink, zero metallic, one for roughness. If we were to edit our instance over instance, it's going to follow in the same parameters. And we could adjust this one individually. So now we have a fully rough, non-rough, non-metallic pink item. But the nice thing is if we were to adjust this one back to one, for example, in the parent, let's say we change, oh, actually let's change to 0.5, for example. Oops, let's try 0.5. In our parent, of course, our child is going to, once we save and reopen, our child itself is going to reflect that into 0.5. So it's again, it's a parent-child hierarchy relationship. And this was all accomplished by simply setting up parameters inside of our materials. Now at any point in time, you could re, let's say for example, you always want them to be metallic. You can just right click, convert it back to a constant and you're done. The majority of your primary nodes are going to have parameter options. As you can see here, you have your vector parameters, different texture samplers, different switches. For example, you could have it where, um, let's say for example, you pulled in a static switch here and this is pretty simple. And let's say we wanted this to be determined if we want, instead of giving our artist the ability to adjust the metallic, let's say we want it to be yes or no. So what you could do is something like this. We'll go ahead and switch this back to a constant. And this is a constant of one. We'll make another constant of zero, put it into false. And if we apply, basically we now have a switch, a yes or no Boolean that determines whether or not this is metallic yes or no, or sorry, roughness, yes or no, I unhooked the metallic. So basically, if I was to go into my material itself and go into our instance, we now have a static switch parameter values because I didn't adjust and it's called none. Let's go in there and rename it because that's just silly. So this is going to be as rough. And there we go. So we'll open it back up in here somewhere. And now we have is rough. And all we have to do here is check this to enable that switch. And if we check this, you're going to find your material is either going to be rough or not rough based on the simple checkbox. And that's it. So your artist can now have easily adjustable parameters in real time if something's rough or not. And again, it applies to any of your other ones. That was just the stack switch. There's Booleans, texture samplers, scalar parameters, dynamic parameters, collection parameters. There's just a whole bunch of different parameters. Any of these specific ones that have uses like the collection parameter, I'll go ahead and cover in more detail in another video. But for now, basically the parameters is just an existing way of adjusting an existing node outside of the material inside of a material instance. So that's what a parameter is. It's basically exposing a variable from your material for someone else to edit. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.